Hello Journey community, church, and friends. Did y'all see that? Y'all saw how easy and fun that was? Okay, great, so no more boring welcomes. Make a creative video like the one you just saw with you and whoever you're isolated with, and then send an email, a text, or Google share it to Jonathan or Katie. If you're watching this on May 3rd, this is your last day to participate in our Mother's Day projects. We need five mom photos from each of you for our Mother's Day gathering. We don't wanna see your wife or your mom sad because she doesn't get to be in the video. So make sure you submit those pictures so that we can honor and celebrate her. And make sure you go on our website and give to the Generosity Project so that we can help a struggling mom in our community in time for Mother's Day. May 3rd is the last day that you can give, so make sure you don't miss out and give. Thanks for those announcements, Hannah. One of the lectionary passages for this week is one if not the most well-known passages in all of scripture it's the 23rd psalm and i have taken great comfort this week in reading and meditating on this psalm especially in the times that we're in right now that are so uncertain and um, maybe even a little bit scary at times so today as we enter into worship i would like for us to read responsibly from this really familiar passage, Psalm 23, but we're gonna read it from an unfamiliar translation. This is the voice translation. And I want this to just be a reminder of the faithfulness and the dependability of God that we worship today. The eternal is my shepherd. He cares for me always. He provides me rest in rich green fields besides streams of refreshing water. He soothes my fears. He makes me whole again, steering me off worn, hard paths to roads where truth and righteousness echo his name. Even in the unending shadows of death's darkness, I am not overcome by fear. Because you are with me in those dark moments, near with your protection and guidance i am comforted you spread out a table before me provisions in the midst of attack from my enemies you care for all my needs anointing my head with soothing fragrant oil filling my cup again and again with your grace certainly your faithful protection and loving provision will pursue me where I go, always, everywhere. I will, I will always be with the eternal, eternal in your house forever. forever. Join us as we sing to the Lord today. It's why I sing your praise, well, heaven. 
ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Father the orphan, you father the orphan, your kindness makes us whole, and you shoulder our weakness, and your strength becomes our own, now you're making me like you, and clothing me in white, bringing beauty from ashes. For you will have your bride free of all her guilt and rid of all her shame and known by her true name. And it's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips. Ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, and you will be praised, you will be praised with angels and saints we sing worthy. i
out. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great forever. And I'm just going to share a little bit from my heart about what I've been going through this week. Personally, I've been experiencing quite a lot of anxiety surrounding um, the upcoming adoption of one of my little guys and paperwork that needs to be fill out, filled out and long-term financial and medical concerns for him. And I found myself really, really overwhelmed with a lot of anxiety and fear regarding that situation. And, and I bring that with me today to worship. And likely you also bring some anxieties with you today to worship too. And so before we approach the Lord in prayer this morning, I want us to spend some time in silence for you just to kind of identify, put your finger on and release as much as you're able those anxieties that you bring with you today that you would just allow the Lord to still your heart before him in his presence as we approach him in prayer. So as I've been dealing with all of these anxieties this week and just really um, seeking the Lord for some sort of um, answer to my anxiety, some sort of peace, um, I've been reading another lectionary passage this week is John 10 and John 10, 14, this is the Good Shepherd passage. In John 10, 14, Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And the Lord said to me, Katie, you know me. Like you, you have experienced me. You have walked with me. You know my faithfulness. You have seen me provide all you have needed. My hand has provided. You know me. 
cling to that. And that's what I've been trying to do this week. And I wanna encourage you to do that as well. What is it that you know of the Lord today? What, what have you learned of him over your years, however long that may be your years of walking with him? I want you to take some time in prayer right now, and I want you to thank and praise him for the things that you know of him. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this uh, evening with uh, gratitude, with thanksgiving in our hearts. Uh, we love you. We praise you. You're a wonderful, wonderful God. You're a God of all things. You're a God of all, of all people. And Lord, we are in a uh, kind of in a chaotic situation these days. Some people are desperate, anxious, scared. Uh, it's like um, we don't know where, where to go. However, as Christians, we do know what to do, where to go, who to claim to, to our wonderful, precious Lord, who has an answer for everything, who is in control of everything. Lord, um, you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of boldness, dear God, and we thank you. And yes, there are times, Lord, when the enemy comes and we kind of feel something, but thanks to you, the Holy Spirit, that that force that love, that power from you, from the Holy Spirit comes and assures us that we are not alone, that you are with us, that you are in control, that we should wait upon you, that we should depend on you, that we should trust and wait on you, dear God. Uh, this virus, this situation, some people say one thing, other people say something else, but Lord, we love you. And, and as far as we're concerned, you are the one whom we should always wait upon. Dear God, uh, people are saying to thank doctors, thank the nurses, thank the responders, uh, and Lord, we surely do. We thank you for, for providing with them, with medicine, with all kinds of uh, help. But I do believe, Lord, that we should always, always, Lord, thank you for the wonders that you do for us, dear God, that if, in, in essence, you, Lord, your power is what shields us your power is what protects us what gives us lord the the spirit of boldness the the the, uh, the assurance that you are there and, and that we can always like when you were on that boat with those disciples your god dear god we ask you to continue to be with us as you were with them and you woke and said there be peace, and there was peace. I ask you, Lord, to bless our churches, all denominations, all uh, people, all congregations, the, the leaders of all denominations, of all uh, congregations. We ask, Lord, for the Nazarene Church. We ask for the church 
that we attend uh, to help our pastor, Lord, the, the work you've given him, his wife, his children, Katie, her children, every family. Lord, uh, uh, I know that you gave them the calling, but we are all responsible, dear God. And we thank you, Lord, that we see that prayer is being lifted up again, dear God. Dear Lord, we ask you as part of that congregation that you would wake up every one of us, that we would understand, dear God, that you do hear us, that you do listen to us and our, uh, our needs our worries, our fears, you take them and you provide for us, dear God. Bless this earth. Bless every country, every nation, dear God. Bless, dear God, our country. Dear God, we ask you to work a miracle. We, we sometimes get desperate, we get frustrated. But as I said, that assurance comes from you, from your Holy Spirit, and we are lifted again. And we, Lord, look up unto you and trust and wait on you, dear God. Bless our church. Bless our leaders. And let everyone understand, dear God, that you are calling at our door, as it says, that you call, that you knock, and that if we hear and answer and open the door, you'll come in. You will come in, and you will have supper with us, and we will eat with you and you with us, and you will supply our need, dear Lord. Help us, my Lord. Help us, my God. Continue to be with, with our pastor, his family with Katie, her family, with the Sunday school teachers, with the praise group, every one of us, dear God, we're all there. Help us so that this uh, quarantine be lifted so we can be in church again. We miss it. We miss it a lot. Help every member of the church, every family, dear God. Lord, help those that have been affected, that have been touched by this virus, dear God. Provide for them. Lift their spirits. Console them, dear God. Dear God, listen to the people that come to you, please. Those with cancer, we've been asked for people that have cancer to come. To, for us to pray for them and so many dear God that are affected with this we ask you dear God to to keep us Lord under your wing to give us what we need my Lord to provide for us spiritually mentally physically dear God and that we will we will not give up we will continue to hold on to your hand Thank you, dear Lord, and I ask you, Lord, to continue to be with us and provide for us, and we will honor and glorify and praise your name, dear God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask all this. And there are things that we forget, but we lay them at your feet, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mary, for that prayer. I want to also encourage you as we go into this next song, which is a new song I want to teach you. I've been thinking a lot this week in particular about that prayer that we've prayed a gazillion times now over the past few months that, um, that we would never take anything for granted, that we would never be found unresponsive, and that we would constantly be awakening to new um, awe and wonder and praise of the goodness of God. And I think in, in my particular situation that I'm facing right now, I, I haven't yet seen the goodness of God. And so I cling to what I know of God. And so from that really familiar Psalm 23 that we read at the beginning of, the, of our gathering today, I wanna read you the, 
the last verse of it, I memorized it. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Uh, the NIV says, surely goodness and love shall follow me all the days of my life. The voice translation that we read earlier says, certainly your faithful protection and loving provision will pursue me where I go, always, everywhere. And the message says, your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. And the thing that I'm clinging to right now is that the goodness of God doesn't, it, it's not just a net that's there to catch me if, if everything goes awry and goes wrong. It is there pursuing me before things go wrong. It's chasing after me. That goodness of God, the love of God, the provision of the loving provision and faithful protection of God. And so I'm going to cling to that today. And that's what I'm going to sing about, even though I haven't yet seen the goodness of God in my particular situation. So as I introduce this song, feel free to sing along as you are able, as you catch the melody and the words or just allow the words to penetrate into your heart this morning. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up, Till I lay my head, oh, I have seen the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and in darkest nights you were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. In all my life, you have been faithful. In all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. the goodness of God. Cause your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you
of the goodness of God. Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Hi, my name is Shelly, and this is Matt, and we'd like to read our scripture for today. Hear the word of the Lord, John 10, verse 1 through 10. Very truly I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, hello everyone. How are we? My name is Jonathan and I have the joy of being the pastor here at Journey. And wherever you are watching and however you are watching and whomever you are watching with, it is uh, great. It is a privilege to be able to be gathered together today. Uh, and one that we don't take lightly. You know, in these uncertain times in which we live, where things are really strange and weird, um, where things are totally different than anything we have ever experienced before, it is difficult at times for us to know what the right thing for us to do is. And so we're sort of left to try and choose oftentimes between really difficult and hard um, and, and in some instances, bad options. Like, do we uh, take caution and continue to um, be shut down um, at the risk of a deeper um, economic hole? Or do we open things back up and allow people um, to go back to their t uh, way of making money and providing for their families at the expense of more people getting sick with the virus. And it's really hard to know um, what are the right things, what are the true things, what are the things that we should all be doing. And what I have been trying to remind myself in this time and what I um, would like to remind all of us is something that is really basic and fundamental um, to being a follower of Jesus and to really to just being a person or an individual um, who's trying to do the right thing, is that we realize that our choices affect others, that every choice that we make has an effect on others. And people who are uh, trying to embody the way of Jesus, who are following the way of Jesus, who are acting according to the kingdom, are people who always consider how their choices affect others and make choices that are for the benefit of others. And I want to encourage us with that today, that we would keep that fundamental kingdom principle in mind as we um, go about these next several weeks and whatever that is going to look like for us, however that is going to be, um, that we would be people who are aware of how our choices affect others and choose that which is to the benefit of others. And the kingdom of God will be revealed through that as we continue to trust in Jesus above all else. And there's a lot of voices out there now, and we're going to talk about that today, uh, that, that there's always a lot of competing voices to the voice of Jesus. And some of them sound, div sound similar to the voice of Jesus. And some of them manipulate the voice of Jesus in order for us to um, jump on those wagons. But um, we know what the voice of Jesus is. 
And we need to trust um, now um, just as much as ever that the voice of Jesus will lead us out of this in the best possible way. Um, And so as much as we are able, uh, my hope is that we will choose that which benefits others, trusting that Jesus's way is better than all others. You know, I've been a pastor now for about 14 years, um, and in the midst of that, I also spent several years as a construction worker. And um, as a construction worker, I built houses all over the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and so I spent a lot of time on the phone and a lot of time driving around in my truck. And one thing that it was really hard for me to get used to was that I would oftentimes have phone conversations with people who I spoke to nearly every day. And so I was able to recognize their voice, but I had never seen them. I'd never um, seen them in person. I had never actually shared space with them. And so I only knew them by their voice. We could have passed one another in the aisle of the grocery store or sat next to each other in a movie theater, and I would have never known them unless I heard their voice. And then I could say, oh, well, that's the person that I talked to. And there were several instances where eventually I did meet someone out on the construction site that they came out of the office and we just happened to be there at the same time. And sometimes the, the, the images in my mind that I have of them um, after only hearing their voice were accurate and sometimes they um, were really uh, misinterpreted. And it was always interesting to know um, people by their voice without ever being able to see them. I want to play a little bit of a game with us before we move forward in our conversation this morning. Um, And you don't have to do anything. It'll just automatically come up here on your screen. But it's a game where we're watching a commercial or a clip from a commercial. And the objective is to try and determine who the narrator is. If that is a voice that you recognize and know who it is or um, not. And so the game is guessing if you know the voice of the narrator. Let's play together. At Planners, we know how to throw a remarkable holiday party, just serve classy snacks, and be a gracious host, no matter who shows up. Perfect pause, a little rub, a bit of a trim, looking sexy. What drives us to engineer the world's first hybrid sedan powered by a compact lithium-ion battery? What drives us to create a hydrogen electric car? So then I said, Mr. Prime Minister, I'm flattered that you love chocolate, but I'm here strictly in a profession. What's wrong with him? With the up all nighters? With the first timers? The matriarchs and the patriarchs? Instant gratification has us in a stranglehold. So much so that we don't want to fix things anymore, just replace them. Arby's new Italian beef and provolone. America's favorite for what we put in it. And now even more appreciated for what we don't. For you, my sweet. Uh I see you are overcome with love. Or could it be congestion and other seasonal nasal allergy symptoms? In the scripture that was read earlier by the Mask family, um, Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. Jesus also suggests that the shepherd goes ahead of the sheep and the sheep follow the shepherd because they know his voice. Now, shepherds aren't really common in our society. Um, we, I don't know of any shepherd. I don't know that I've ever known a shepherd. I've known people to take care of livestock, um, but the way in which we do it is so different um, from the times of the Bible that this is really an unfamiliar analogy to me when Jesus calls himself the good shepherd. And so it's one that begins with questions. When Jesus calls himself a good shepherd, I begin to say, okay, well, um, what does that mean in, in And how um, is that significant to us today? And one of the instances that Jesus brings about in his analogy of being the good shepherd is that the sheep know his voice. 
And so the first question that comes to my mind then is, how do we know the voice of Jesus? This is why at Journey we emphasize a lot of, on spiritual disciplines because it is through the disciplines of prayer and scripture reading and community and silence and solitude and introspection and examine that we really are able to know the voice of God, the voice of Jesus. And so in order for us to be able to know Jesus's voice and to be able to distinguish Jesus's voice among the many voices that we um, hear, is to be connected with him, as, as the analogy also is um, that Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. And prayer and silence and scripture and community um, link us together to the vine in order that we are able to know the voice of Jesus. Then the second question that comes to my mind is, why was, is there this analogy of a shepherd? You know, if you study the scriptures, it doesn't take long to see this theme of shepherd being brought up uh, over and over and over again throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, both in reality as a person was a shepherd, but also as a metaphor for um, a leader, for a person leading others in the way of Jesus. Uh, Abel um, was a shepherd in the Bible um, before he was done in by his brother Cain. Um, Abraham and Moses were both shepherds. Um, King David began as a shepherd. The angels appeared to the shepherds in order to announce the arrival of God on earth. Prophets were often equated to being shepherds. And so this is a very interesting thing that is very prominent in the Bible because uh, shepherds weren't very high on the, in the hierarchy of their day. Um, in fact, um, they were often more like nomads, people who were just sort of wanderers. Uh, they, they, they didn't often have offspring. They didn't have a family. They didn't even have a place of their own to call home. Um, in many instances, the shepherd in the family was the youngest of the sons, the one who, um, by the time the inheritance was shared um, throughout all of the oldest, older siblings, that there wasn't much for them, that they had to kind of go out and make their own way. And so it's very peculiar um, that God would use this illustration or example of a shepherd throughout the scriptures and that God, that Jesus himself would call himself the good shepherd. And it highlights this sort of upside down reality of the way of the kingdom of God, that the ways of the world would suggest that we would find the most powerful, the most vibrant, the most noticeable person, and that that's who we would uh, use analogies and metaphors about. But God God picks some of the lowliest in society um, in order to reveal himself. This is why when the prophet Samuel is told by God to go and anoint the next king of Israel, he goes to the house of Jesse and, uh, and, and lines out all of the sons. And the son that God chose, the shepherd David, actually isn't even in the original lineup because Jesse knew that this was not, this was the runt of the litter. This was the, 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 the vagabond. This was the, the nomad of of the family. He was the wanderer, and so why would God choose him? But as we know, God chose him above all others. And as we begin to unpack this as to maybe why this is, shepherds lead their sheep patiently and lovingly to where they need to be. That sheep trust the shepherd because the shepherd has proved worthy of their trust. The shepherd has their best interest in mind and will do anything and everything in order to help the sheep uh, sustain life and uh, to, to be um, the best versions of themselves. But shepherds also protect their sheep fiercely. What are the stories of David and, and, and the, the confrontations that he had with the lion and the bear um, as he was a shepherd? 
God not only values shepherd, but God is the good shepherd. God entered into the sheep's world to lovingly and patiently lead this sheep to pasture. The shepherd would love so much indeed that he would give his life for his sheep. And that is why God chose shepherds. So while we might have to study a bit in order to understand all of these um, intricate details and the significance behind the shepherd metaphor, for the Jewish leaders of Jesus's day, they were keenly aware of this as Jesus spoke about him being the good shepherd. But before Jesus utters these words, this story actually begins with a confrontation surrounding a miracle. See, even by Jesus's contemporaries, those who didn't even care for him or his ways, they understood him to be a spiritual teacher. This is why you see references to them calling him rabbi, um, calling him good teacher. Uh, This is why Nicodemus shows up at his door, um, because he recognizes that there is some sort of truth in Jesus's words that he had never really known before. And so he ends up at the, 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 the door of Jesus in the night. Um, now, they thought that he was out there, that he was sort of on the margins of good quality spiritual teaching, but he was a teacher nonetheless. And the religious leaders of Jesus's day, they knew of the prophets calling their actions into question. They knew of prophets challenging their motives. Jesus, in fact, wasn't the only one who was calling their motives into question. And they knew that Israel had a rich history of prophetic voices speaking to their ancestors. You are leading in ways that are contrary to the ways of the kingdom that have been blinded by greed and selfishness and envy um, and death. And you are leading others towards this as you claim to be leading them towards God. But what was unique about Jesus is they couldn't write him off. They couldn't put him into a corner. They couldn't silence him. Not only was Jesus an expert in the law and able to, uh, to dialogue with the, the, the most brilliant and, and well-educated of his day, um, he performed all of these miracles. And it was these miracles that caused even some of the most solidified leaders in the Jewish ranks to question whether or not Jesus' claims about being the son of God, about being the good shepherd, were actually valid. There began to be this sort of under dialogue of of if this man was a sinner or if he was trying to gain his own kingdom, he could not do these wonderful, miraculous signs. But the leaders of his day who had the power and authority, they were on to Jesus that that he was going to limit their power if they didn't put a stop to it. And in order to maintain power, they began to discredit Jesus. They began to uh, call him guilty by association, that if he was the son of God, he wouldn't be hanging out with the tax collectors and the prostitutes and those shunned by the religious elite. He said they, they, they accused him of not keeping the law, of breaking the law of Sabbath. And they even accused him of using plants in his miracle schemes, that he wasn't actually performing miracles, but these were plants in order to manipulate people. So when the man that is born blind is now able to see, the Pharisees know that they are really in trouble. So they began to hardcore tear Jesus down, which would eventually lead to his death. Now this person born blind was healed by Jesus, but the blindness that Jesus was unable to heal was those who were blinded because they were manipulating God to achieve their own ends. 
Jesus, in fact, called them thieves and robbers. But Jesus was not the first prophet to call the religious leaders of his day thieves and robbers. If you look back throughout the Old Testament in Ezekiel and uh, Zechariah, there are mentions of thieves and robbers, and we automatically assume that these are foreign nations, that these are foreign threats. But who the prophets are calling thieves and robbers are the actual leaders who have been entrusted to lead the people of God, to be the people of God, but yet they have been corrupted, they have been blinded, they have been motivated by their own greed and selfishness instead of by the love of God. Jesus also told the Pharisees that they, in other places in the scriptures, that they burdened people with their own desires, with their, they weighed them down with their own laws that they masqueraded as God's laws, but they weren't willing to lift a finger even to help them. And in contrast to this, Jesus positions himself as the good shepherd who will patiently, lovingly lead people to the ways of God. You know, Israel has a long history of being captive. Sometimes they are being captive by opposing outside forces, whether that be Egypt or Babylon. And even into modern day, we have examples of this. But sometimes they were led into corruption and um, into being captive by those in their own ranks who succumbed, who who were overtaken by fear and by uh, hate and by power and by greed. They were corrupted by these things. And Jesus draws a line in the sand when he echoes the sentiment of some of the Old Testament prophets who says, you are thieves and robbers. Jesus says, my sheep know my voice and they will follow me. They know the ways of God. They know the voices of God. They know that my voice validates those ways and those voices, and they will follow me. Now, there are no shortage of voices for us to follow. There are voices that lead us to the kingdom, and then there are those who lead us astray. And at times, you and I are sort of bounced in the middle of all of the voices that are out there trying to find that which is right, that which is loving, that which is pure, that which leads us to the kingdom But oftentimes there are voices that slide in in order to manipulate us um, into um, the opposite of the kingdom of God. And so as Jesus says, we have to know these voices. In John 10.10, Jesus says, The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come, Jesus says, so that you can have eternal life, and life to the full. Most of my life, I assumed that the thief was the devil. But who Jesus is talking to and speaking about and who the prophets in the Old Testament were talking to and speaking about, it wasn't the devil, but those who have been leveraging God to achieve their own end and masqueraded themselves as people of God all along. And so Jesus is offering to us a bit of a warning here to say, we need to make sure that we are following the voice of the good shepherd and not one who is leading us astray. A test for all of us to 
to test the voices that we are following of whether or not they are leading us into the kingdom of God or whether they are leading us astray is that the voices that lead us to the kingdom of God, the voice of the good shepherd is always patient and loving and just towards all. The voices that began to build the walls, the voices that began to build the boundaries, the voices that began to build the us versus them mentality, those aren't voices of the kingdom. Those are voices, in fact, of thieves and robbers that Jesus is speaking against. Those who have been influenced by selfishness and greed and evil and death. But as we have celebrated in the resurrection and celebrated at Easter, that Jesus, that life is eternal, whereas the powers of death and greed and selfishness are finite. And so as a community of faith and as people who are following the way of Jesus and learning to be present, my prayer for us is that we would learn to follow the voice of Jesus and easily be able to pick out the voices that are contrary to the ways of the kingdom of God. Let's pray together. Jesus, in these times, in these days, We are surrounded by many voices, voices of fear and anxiousness, uh, voices that um, are uh, suggesting that they want what is best for us and best for all, but um, perhaps they are voices that only want what is best for a few. But Jesus, we want to see through all other voices that are contrary to yours, to see through all other voices that lead us away from your kingdom. And we want to follow and trust your voice first. So Jesus, for us as Journey community, I pray that you would help us to uh, practice disciplines that help us to distinguish between your voice and the voice of others. And then, Jesus, we pray that you would give us the trust and the courage to follow your way, to see past the schemes of the thieves and the robbers that are out there, to look for the places in our lives that have been held captive by that which comes to steal, kill, and destroy, and to allow you to invade and to choke out any of those notions that might be present in our ways in order that we might be alive to your kingdom first. Jesus, we trust you, but help us help the areas of our lives that have any amount of untrust in you. We ask these things, Jesus, in your name and for your sake. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Let us profess together who God has called us to be. We are a community of people following the way of Jesus and learning to be present. Let us remember the words the Lord Jesus said on the night which he was betrayed. He took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Amen. Journey today we have the opportunity 
to receive the invitation once again to the table that Jesus has prepared for us. This is a table where we learn to trust his voice, to trust his ways. We learn to be people of the kingdom. So today, may we eat and drink of the body and blood of Jesus that nourishes, forms, and shapes us into his image for the sake of others. O oh God, help us now to love as Christ loved. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Give us strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection when we will feast with you at your table of glory. In Christ's name and for his sake, amen. Now, Journey, we leave you with a benediction. Today, Whatever we do and however we are doing it, may we be aware of the patterns of our lives that are formed and shaped by the voice of Jesus. And may those ways crowd out all of the other voices that are contrary to the kingdom. Be present today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.